Attention pro athletes. Want to secure your financial legacy and thrive off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, is your dedicated financial planning ally. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Biotish. He says, Chris set goals financially and has been incredibly impactful in my journey in the NFL. Experience our customized, comprehensive approach, trusted by top NFL players. Don't leave your financial success to chance. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And let Oakbridge Wealth Management guide you across the goal line. Welcome back to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag and Oak Ridge Wealth Management. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? You remember it? Dude, it's every day's a holiday. (laughs) This is going to be fun, man. I know it. Well, who do we have, Bern? Oh, we got the big bad man himself. Clink, I... Everything you do, I do. I tell you the truth. Do I like say the truth about you when we talk? Uh, I I feel like it's a little bit exaggerated, but maybe most of it is true. Dude, we (laughs) had Jonathan Klingskow, who's a a guard. You were there the entire time I was there until my senior year, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Oh one to oh four. Uh, yes. Two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I graduated high school in two thousand, and I was there from. My senior year was 04. Did you start every – did you start as a freshman? I started as a redshirt freshman, yeah. Yeah, so I started okay. – so so I redshirted my first year, and then after that, um, Calvin Barrett and I um, shared some oh, time, right. first couple games, and then um, after we played Ohio State, I was starting for the rest of my career. Because you're a bad dude, man. <laughs> on the field, on the field. Not off the field for the nicest no. guy you'll ever meet. <laughs> I try to be. I try to be. I mean, but but when you are playing the game of football, I mean, like, uh, you know, some people, the 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 the, the flip, the, the proverbial flip does switch and you uh, turn into a different person. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had a good time out there, though. It was a good release. <laughs> well, I'm, ex- I'm excited, uh, Clink, because you were there for uh, – Bernie's uh, Penn State game. You were you, you were paving the way. Uh, oh yeah. In that one, and I'm going to uh, want to ask you about that here in a little bit. But before we do, I uh, want to remind everyone that we are presented by BetOnline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at BetOnline. Uh, head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code Believe. That's B L E A V. BetOnline, where the game starts. Okay. Now we can really get started here, uh, Bernie. And so I'm just gonna I'm gonna hand the ball off to uh, my number one fullback here and let you uh, and let you lead the way because this is your guy. Could, I got so many places to go. I don't know if we have enough time on this podcast. <laughs> let's let's quickly start as like a young clink growing up in California. Get us like, what did you look like? How did football come into your life? And then we'll go into like, how did Wisconsin even get on the board there? Um. Uh, growing up, uh, I'm a native of Pasadena, Altadena, Pasadena, California. Um, I went to John Muir High School. Um, I, I wasn't really heavily recruited um, coming out of California. I went to went to like a Nike Pro Day at SC, and I got my name on like the student sports magazine back in the day. That was like a big deal. I was fired up about that. Um, but uh, actually, how I got uh, how I got seen by Wisconsin, um, they were actually looking for a different player. Um, they were looking for a guy um, by the name of James Samuel. He went to San Diego State. Um, he ended up going to San Diego State, but they were looking at him to play like linebacker, safety, something. He 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 was a, a very good player, and um, I just happened to keep showing up on his highlight reels. You know, being physical, throwing people around, doing some stuff like that. So, so, so they came and uh, they thought I was, they thought I was older. So when they came and found out I was like, uh, I was a sophomore, junior, something's like, oh yeah, we're going to come back. And I, I'll never forget <laughs> my, my coach, 
uh, you know, back in the day, the, the coaches would use like uh, they would come to the school and come and check you out. You know what I mean? Come and shake your hand and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in you, blah, blah, blah. So um, the Wisconsin coach came to the school and I remember he grabbed me and like grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me. He was like, oh, yeah, man, we'll get you to 300 in no time. And I looked at him. I'm like, Pfft. so as soon as he left, I told my coach, I'm like, man, Wisconsin is my number five. I'm like, I'm not going there. I don't even know where it's at on the map, man. You know, I was a, you know, kid from California, you know, a great passing the unified school district, man. You know, I didn't know where Wisconsin was on the map. <laughs> I thought Milwaukee was in Minnesota. I thought <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, man. Uh, uh, like uh, a, a funny story. I remember I got back to the school and um, my my geography teacher, who was who was our uh, one of our defensive coaches, came to me. He was like, hey, Clink, man, do you know? where Wisconsin is. And I was like, yeah, kind of. He was like, he pulled out a map and he showed me. I was like, damn, you know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. But I mean, um, Wisconsin, they show interest in me from the start. And it was kind of like, you know, my, my high school coach told me, he's like, hey, you know, uh, we don't turn down scholarships. So if you get to, if they offer you a scholarship, you tell them yes. And I was a kid, I'm like, yes, sir. You know, because I had kids from my school, like going, like to a bunch of packed in schools, like going to schools, Washington, commit, go next week, go to Oregon State, commit, go next week, another school. So I thought that's how it kind of went uh, with, with my naive self. And I came here and they, <laughs> and schools just shut it down on me. They, they offered me, I said yes. And then um, I got I got told I was, wasn't was smart by an Arizona coach. He, t- he cursed me out, told me I was dumb. <laughs> he was like, he was like, you have no idea what you're doing, man. You know how cold it is up there and all this other type of stuff. And it was like, I was like, no, nah, man, I just knew I was going to play ball, but it all worked out. <laughs> Dude, we, is, <laughs> who was the coach that came in and said, we'll get you up to 300 pounds? Uh, Brian White, Coach White. CB Dub, the man, yeah, the myth, the yeah. legend. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Coach White saw me and, and he, and he, he was like, you know what? Like, he, he saw what I had on tape and he was like, he projected and saw me. He was like, man, there's no, he's like, you have a scratch to the, the, the edge of the potential. I, like, because I wasn't, I wasn't this, the size I am now. I was like 275, you know, like my senior, my sophomore year, I was like 220. My 11th grade year, I was maybe like 250, like maybe getting to 265, you know. And it was like, I was like, when I got here to Wisconsin, I was like 370. No, I was 270. I put on like 30 pounds my my freshman year <laughs> in the dorms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a right question. Just from the dorms. Yeah, just from the dorms. That, that, that good old that good old Towers. That good old Towers. Wait, <laughs> so, we first off, Coach Brian, I mean, I call him Coach Brian White way too much. Uh, uh, Coach White was the run coordinator, so he must have like did that. In, did that have like an impression on you that yeah, he was yeah, so yeah. heavily involved? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, to, to have an offensive coordinator come into your school and be like, "Hey, I think you can be a big piece in our running game." And, and, and I mean, um, I wasn't ignorant about Wisconsin. I mean, like uh, I'm from Pasadena. They went to the Rose Bowl. Um, I, 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 I saw, I saw, I saw Dane running and getting loose. So, so I mean, like I, I, I knew what Wisconsin was about um, just because I, I did. You know, I was a football fan and everything. But you know, as far as me being a kid where I was from, I didn't think it was it was even a thing. I, I just knew I liked to be. I like the physical brand of football and we played like wing T. So, I mean, it, it was all downhill run. So I'm just down blocking on people, flipping people, you know, but, but like, the, it was like, it was like, we had, we were a smaller school and we didn't have a bunch of kids. So like they had me playing the extra tight end. So like, you know, like back, it would be like when they had Joe playing tackle and tight end and stuff that w- it would be like a kid like me, my size, just, just beating up on little DNs and stuff, making kids cry and everything. It was, it was, it was like, I would love to see high school <laughs> playing just, dominate dudes yeah it, it, it was ridiculous man you know i mean like like some of the stuff i was doing it, it wasn't really you know it wasn't dirty but i mean it wasn't nice you know I mean, i'm headbutting cats and doing all type of stuff that i wouldn't want my son to do but you know <laughs> <laughs> like i was getting cheered for it so i thought it was the way to go i was like all right man <laughs> well get... 30 years ago it was the way to go yeah yeah definitely i mean yeah. all that stuff was completely fine yeah i mean like you know like the measure of player that, that, that's how they measured you was is, is whether or not like you're willing to stick your head in there and, and make some contact and be physical with people. But I mean, like from like I, I came from like a, a high school with like football pedigree, so it was kind of like it was the norm, you know. Like uh, we had, we, you know, you know, see those memes where they say that Oklahoma drill made more basketball players than anybody. It was the truth because I seen a couple of kids turn away from from the game because of you know what was going on out there in those loud sounds. So, all right. So did you take did you take an official visit? What was that like? 
Um, yeah, so <laughs> um, it's it, my official visit was crazy, man, because I came up here. I came up here December tenth, and it was it wasn't really that cold, so I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. I mean, um, it was like maybe like a few flurries, but my mom, being the mother that she is, she was like, you know, she scraped up some little money she had and bought me like a big old Timberland jacket, a big old big like the goose fat Timberland jacket, one of those deals. She got she caught a deal somewhere and, and we and she sent me there here with one of those on. So I really wasn't feeling the cold. Um <laughs> and I remember I saw you I don't know if you guys have talked about Darius on here, but um uh, D Jones was on my recruit trip. So 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 D Jones looked like Raj, you know, they look like 30 year old men with big old beards and stuff like that. And I remember him asking me, he was like, hey, man, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm thinking he's one of the guys on the team. I'm like, oh, I'm from Pasadena. He was like, what? He, he was like, you got this big old Timberland jacket on? He's like, oh, you're coming here. You're committing. Like, he, he's on the team. Like, let's go. You know, I was like, what? Like, dude, be quiet, man. I don't want everybody to know that I'm trying to go to Washington State next week, man. You know, like, <laughs> like what are you talking about? Uh, it was funny. Did you take that visit? No, I didn't. So, so, so I have another crazy story about that. So I remember when I committed, uh, whatever it was when Albie calls you down to the, to, to the, to the chair and, and talks to you. And then, you know, they, they let you know, they want you to be a badger. After that, I remember we went out to the bars and whatnot. And then I remember that next morning, um, the phone ringing in the hotel. I remember picking up the phone and it was like, this is so-and-so from the Wisconsin State Journal. Like, how do you feel about being one of the newest? And I just click, hung the phone up on him. I'm like, who was that? I'm like, nobody's supposed to know that stuff. I was like, <laughs> it was crazy. But uh, no, a, a team started canceling my trips, you know, because back in the day, it wasn't like really the era of people trying to steal recruits, you know? So it was like, and people uh, respected, either respected or filled Alvarez. So they were like, you know, um, if, if this kid is being recruited to play offensive line and I wasn't really tied to highly recruited, they was like, well, we missed out on something. There's no way we're going to get him, you know? So they just gave up on it. Dude, that's so wild. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. were supposed to go to Washington State and then you committed – at yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah, I was supposed to go to Washington State. I was going. I was going there for D line, um, and then I ha then I had like a smaller school trip. I was probably going to go like to Portland State with a couple of guys on my on my high school team. You know, as, as the buddy trip and yep. and try to figure it out. You know, but that's that's just who's how your it. host? Um, Angelo Pagatafanador. My my. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my, my trip was terrible, man. My trip was terrible. I'm telling you, I committed because my coach was like, hey, man, yeah, you need to go there. And I was like, okay. We didn't do anything, Bernie. Like, we stayed at the Towers, and, and me, and I don't know if you I don't know if you remember um, a guy named Clarence. He, he, uh, Jonathan Walsh's running back from his high school, him and I were here on the same week. And we had, we had got commandeered two st scooters from, from Byron Brown and Angelo. And we just was riding down State Street, and we didn't know that you couldn't do that. So, like that—that that was the extent of our recruiting trip. We went out like one night, but then we just ride around scooters, and we played. Uh, what was it? The uh, the the Big Bass Fisher game on on the Sega. It was it wasn't Genesis. What was it like? The whatever Dreamcast. That's what we did on my recruit trip. It wasn't it wasn't epic. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Oh my god! Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. I mean, when you okay, think back. It's funny because I never played that game, and then I moved in with Antaj, uh, and we played that game. Talk about gaining thirty pounds. I didn't even do it freshman year. I did it before we even started, <laughs> just hanging out with Antaj. Uh, it was terrible. We played that yeah. Bass Fisher all day, all day long, all day long. And, and it's and, and not a fun can, game. Yeah, no. I mean, I couldn't even tell you what it looks like. <laughs> Good either. I like playing that game <laughs> for no reason. Um, all right, so you're committed. You're coming to Wisconsin. Man, w you show up. When when do you come? Are you in July? You come yeah. in August? No, I, I came. I came at the end of July. So like uh, when I came, I think it was like the last day of the summer conditioning. And they had to run stadium steps, and uh, and I remember I had. Um, in the uh, California-Florida um, high school all-star game. 
So, so, and they were, and they came up here a little bit earlier than I did. And I remember seeing them running those upper decks and Calvin about to die. He was like bear calling up there and, and JD was yelling at him and he had on some, like some big, like powder blue shorts on or something like that. And then the big old sweat stains, man, it was, he was looking horrible. Because <laughs> yeah, they you know, couldn't give you any gear. You no, couldn't no, get the gear yet. Yeah. You know, you couldn't get any gear, but it was like, I came with my mom and stuff, and Calvin always tells me he'd never forget looking down from the upper decks and seeing me. With, and I had just got like uh, I got like some high school tattoos or whatever. And he was like, yeah, I remember he had the high school, he had a shirt cut off shirt on with some high school tattoos. Uh, he was always talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was one of the worst things showing up on a Tuesday, oh. your first day, and they're like, oh, let's do an orientation. But the orientation was a lift. That you yes. really just went right up to the stadiums in whatever gear you used to wear. So whatever team mm -hmm. colors you had pretty much was like the shorts. Yeah. So like whatever for me, it was like blue yeah. shorts. Yeah. Some but, kind like, of like basketball shoes. It was terrible. Yeah. This is back when they really couldn't give us anything, you know, well, above board. They wasn't, they weren't going to break any rules for the young freshmen coming in. <laughs> But that's how you knew who you who people were too. It was, it was just felt horrible. Like you weren't even part of the team because you oh. looked like a, a like you looked like a homeless dude off the yeah. side of like. And, you, uh, and, and you're in the back of all the exercises. The last Wait. one there, and like there, uh, JD's blowing whistles, giving you cadences, and telling you what to do, and everybody's moving in unison. And you're just like, like, oh, like okay, uh, and you're dead tired. It was, it wasn't good. <laughs> And so what was your first impression of John Dedman? Um, it was, uh, I don't know, man. JD was different, man. It was like, it was like, it was like fear, but still at the same time, like you kind of respected the guy, but then it would be like, he'd be going on his rants and then he kind of get you fired up. So it was like, it was like a multitude of feelings you felt, but at the same time, it was like, you never wanted to get on his bad side. You know what I mean? Because it'd be, it'd be the end of you, you know? But I mean, you know, like he, he definitely would, would bring out the best in everybody. But I remember if you were just like, have some conversations with him sometime and just try to pick, like just, just scratch the, the surface of what's going on in his head, man. You'd be like, all right, man, I'm going to get back to this left because I don't even want to talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you had you had a, a, a two coaches then. If you have JD, who is kind of crazy, I mean, Huber was. You guys yeah. had different experiences with him, but let's let wait. Let's wait for that conversation okay. because I remember JD loved you. Yeah, That's what yeah. I remember. He loved you. But but yeah, because like it's like I worked hard, and and, and I remember like uh, <laughs> I remember one time. Um, he was like, I was like taking my time going through the lifts or whatever. And I remember it was like one time we were going to, it was a Tuesday station. You know how we had to do the curls before or whatever. And then, and then, then he's, he's like, clink scale, you over here taking your time. Cause you scared them, 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 uh, those, those, what was he doing ladder hexes or something that day. And I'm like, and then I'm like, no, JD, I'm like, I'm like, you got to check out this form right here. And I'm just like doing this curls real slow. And he just shook his head. Like this dude's crazy. You know what I mean? Because it was like, I was, I was like, I'm not going to let this dude break me. Even though he scared me to death, you know, I just, you, you couldn't show fear. You know what I mean? Cause it was like, if he did, he would attack you. So you had to just try to like, you know, try to match his level of craziness but i mean you know you, you get in the workouts the, the adrenaline is pumping and stuff you might say some things you might have regretted later but like all right forget it it's out there <laughs> <laughs> What's the so so you start so you're you redshirted you're going up against the the ones yes. what is i mean that is uh a lot of people have to do that and it's not the easiest thing in the world no. what was your experience on scout offense do you have spence uh, yeah, I, I had Spence. We, uh, we had Spence in the whiskey. Um, he, he was our he was our scout team coach. Uh, he was one of the best coaches I've had, man. He was he was, he was a blast. But um, he used to give us a hard time because we would get him in trouble because Calvin and I would always fight, you know, like with the D lineman and stuff like that. It, <laughs> the, in the day when it was OK to have fights at practice, you know, so it would be like a brawl every nine on seven period or something. And we were like, you know, if somebody would jump on him. I would hop in on it. And then it, they would like call us. The, we had like a, a wrestler tag team name or something. They was calling us. It, 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 it was it was funny. I had a good time, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have uh, Palermo just yelling at you the whole time during these fights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and, and it was like I would like. uh 
uh, Palermo didn't want me fumbling the snaps or he didn't want Shaves fumbling the snaps. So I never would have like a ball in my hand. I would always have like that, that towel, that fake simulated ball. So I would like, I would have to snap it and then hold on to it because he didn't want anybody to step on it. <laughs> so then, but then it'd be like, like the mat, if we have like a good, a positive play or something, if, if Anthony or someone would get a good run or Jerome Pettis was used to kill the scout team defense. I mean, the first ones, for the, uh, the the first team defense on scout team, and he would break off a big run or something, and then like Jason Dorn or something get mad and go and hit him and just knock him, just knock him hard. So I was like, man, don't take that, man, throw the ball at him, you know. So it was like, <laughs> like, like that was like one of my things. I was always like trying to heckle at practice, trying to get the ball at the dudes if they hit them too hard or something like that you know like we were trying to we were like a tight-knit team you know like it's like our freshman class we all kind of banded together so it was like hey man don't take that man just throw the ball at that dude like you know just trying to just start something up to kick off a brawl so we can try to get some time off of practice <laughs> so, so, so any time off during uh scout team is the best time off anytime uh, anytime off anytime. Uh, you mentioned ad anthony davis one of the funniest one of the best to ever do it. What was it like when you met when you met him? Um, when I first met AD and Soar, so uh, um, it was our, our freshman orientation. Um, AD and I, we had, we had took, we, I think we just finished our the, the math portion of the SOAR. And I think we're, you know, like, it's kind of like standardized tests and you, you go in there by yourself. So you, we eyeing up the guys who look like they may play or something and one of the breaks you kind of like hey you're on the team like yeah i'm on the team too or whatever so then it was like i forget it was it was ad me and one and thinking it might have been calvin it might have been calvin um we all we were like hey um we heard there's a lift today we was like oh really like okay yeah man so so and it was like you know how they used to have time slots where you can get your lifts in or whatever three times to get a lift so we we thought that we could try to go down there and be like you know trying to be kissed up a little hey we just got out of so we're gonna come try to get our lift in coach you know we're serious about playing ball and, and we ran into to brian bot and um brian bot he was the first person to give me my first verbal assault when I came to be a college <laughs> football player. It was it was ridiculous. I mean, and if you ask him about it, I mean, he probably still laughs to this day because it was like he said l- later I found out that he, he was new to the to the program and we were like his first some kids asses out to excuse me uh, to, to chew some kids butts off so we can uh, so, so JD would like him, you know what I mean, type deal. So and he caught us and we were like he was like because we 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 skipped the portion where they take you on the school tour. We took all our tests and everything like that, but we was like we're going to skip the school tour. We don't need that. Let, let's go lift. You know what I mean? So we got in there and got cursed out. He just scared us to death. You know what I mean? He was just calling us all type of idiots. We missing school stuff. School is first, and you guys shouldn't be doing here. What the hell are you guys doing here? What are you thinking? This is so busy. And then we were just like, oh my god, we were just trying to come lift. Like I thought that's what we were here to do. You know? And uh, that was the first time I was ever. Uh, that was the first one. The first of many. <laughs> It's pretty funny that you did that because I listened to Antaj and he said I didn't have to go to SOAR. So I didn't go to SOAR. I took the test and that's all I did. And uh, I got verbally assaulted by Jerry Darda and then everyone else up the chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you do? I mean, I threw Antaj under the bus to Jerry Darda. But after that, I was like, (laughs) I I didn't stop doing it because it wasn't going to help anyone. It was just – he didn't go either. So he he skipped – I love Antosh to death, but if you're going to take advice from somebody as an 18 year old, Antosh was. Not yeah, but, but but you had no reference points to know though. I mean, like it's you would zero. think, like like you would think, hey, this is an older player. Oh, he's very friendly. You know what? All right, I'm gonna listen to this guy. And you guys had that East Coast connection too, so you probably thought y'all had some type of he's looking out for you or something, but he didn't. <laughs> but he didn't. Also, you have no phone. I didn't have a computer. Oh like, wow! I, I didn't have anything. Like you couldn't find it. I had no idea what to do. You know, Jerry Dart is not helping me out. Like, he doesn't care. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care at all. The, all right, so, uh, so, I, so, so you become – so now you're you're looking to start, right? You're That's, like, mm-hmm. coming up. Um, I'm redshirting at the time, but you're, you're playing, dude. Like, what was yeah. that time period? What was the offseason like? And then what was the ramp up in spring and then fall camp for you? Um, the, the, the ramp up in spring um, was basically like, hey – 
Um, they just had three guys who, who who played a lot of games here at Wisconsin. They have Casey Robach, Dave Costa, and Bill Ferrario. Those were the three inside up for grabs. Um, going into the and going into my going into my retro freshman season, um, uh, we had coming back. We had Al Johnson and Ben Johnson. Those were the two guys who kind of solidified their spots. And then I think the right tackle was between like. Um, Jason Jowers, like Mike Lorenz, and like Jack Dabowski or something like that. But um, it was basically like the the inside two was the, were, were my positions that I played. Um, they and, and my freshman year they had me playing some backup center. So kind of t- brought me in and told me it was like, hey, you know, uh, this spot is is here for a taking, and, and we want to try to get the most consistent player in there. So I think that's why um, I'm coming out of spring ball. Um, I think Calvin and I both made some improvements, but I don't think we kind of um, separated ourselves enough in the coach's eyes, I guess. So, so going into camp, um, the competition was still open. So, so I mean that from from spring ball to to, to the end of the training camp, I felt it, it was like it was just a all-out competition for the starting role. So I mean, every every rep was under scrutiny, um, and and by Hughes and probably all the other coaches as well, because you kind of because I kind of felt like you had to win over some of the other coaches as well. So they were like, you know, because like because you, you could tell when you were doing well if other position group coaches would kind of talk to you or something, you know, and you know you're doing bad if everybody's ignored you and act like you weren't even there, you know. So I mean, like when when uh, when I got a couple out of boys from JP, you know, I thought I, I, I that's when I knew I was you know doing the right thing or something like that, and then trying to just trying to build on that and try to not make mistakes. Um, I mean, like the type of the type of online play we played back then, it was all about like precision and being physical and stuff like that. And I knew how to be physical, so but I just had to kind of just hone my technique and just trying to concentrate on that. And that's just what I that's what I prided myself on, just having good technique and being in the right position and knowing what I was doing. And just and then, and then after you get, but that didn't have come on to like later on in my career. It was more just trying to figure it out, you know. Attention, athletes. Do you want a frictionless and tailored financial planning experience to secure your future? Well, look no further. Introducing Oak Bridge Wealth Management, the premier financial planning firm for professional athletes. Led by wealth manager, Chris Anasetti, our team provides a unique and comprehensive approach, ensuring your financial success both on and off the field. We understand the unique challenges you face as a professional athlete, from managing cash flow habits to planning major business purchases and navigating complex contracts. That's why we've developed a proven process, working closely with our strategic partners to provide seamless solutions for your unique financial journey. Our services evolve with your career, offering short, mid, and long-term goal setting, portfolio optimization, real estate investments, and more. As you transition to life beyond the field, we support you with career development and philanthropic ventures. But don't just take our word for it. Top NFL players like Chase Boulier, Tyler Biotish, Alec Ingold, and more trust Oak Bridge Wealth Management to guide them towards financial success. Troy Dye of the Minnesota Vikings says, I really love the work that Chris and the rest of the Oak Bridge group do. I especially like the honesty and transparency when it comes to setting up financial goals and plans that best fit my needs and situation. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anacete. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. Okay, so let's get let's get into it. Coach Huber was bananas. Also, that before you before as you say, like other coaches giving you like an attaboy, that is the funniest thing because you don't even realize it until like coach Mason comes over and is like, Hey, burn good play. You're like, who the heck is this guy? Yeah, You know, yeah, like, this, this guy wouldn't, wouldn't even say, excuse me in the child line, man. It was like, he didn't yeah. exist. <laughs> you know, and then it all it's invisible started. to have yeah. the coaches. Right. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, we also have to say, uh, if Huber yells at you, then he cares about you. Cause that's yes. what coach white was like, dude, let me just convince these guys that he cares. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> It, it 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 was it, it it was something special, man. I mean, like um, I, I've never had a coach like him. Um, 
at being target by Coach Huber. I mean, for somebody who was definitely like on, he was definitely on the X and O's. He drilled. He had some good drills. What he did, but I mean, to, for somebody who can just so colorfully tell you you were a piece of crap, man, <laughs> it, it had to be some skill, man. I mean, I got Fred. And he was ready with some good stuff, man. But it, 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 it was crazy. I mean, it was definitely stressful. But I mean, but when you get to the point to where he didn't have nothing to say to you, it felt good, you know, because it was like, yeah, he was now you got to just be quiet. You know, that six inch step is right there. You see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he created some some good linemen. Oh, man. So, I mean, there yeah. must have been a little bit of like a respect thing to just let him yell at you and just say, that's eh, all right. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I mean, like he, his, his, um, his expectation for you was definitely higher than what you had of yourself. Um, and he gave you like some of that old school tough love where it's kind of, it, it would be frowned upon in today's game. Um, but, you know, th th there were times that we definitely butted heads as far as like saying what actually happened out there or, or, or how some should be done or what you should do. But then, you know, um, it, it was the best feeling in the world. We'd come with him and tell you you did a great job. You know what I mean? But and, and, and he would do that. You know, he wasn't like a coach who would just be all up on you. You know what I mean? Like he would be all up on you because he expected a certain level of excellence. But, you know, still at the same time, you know, he, he is one of his favorite lines. And it's probably JP's too was like, you know, um, don't don't confuse effort with results you know so it was like you can try your best but you know if you didn't get the job done you still is your job isn't done you know and 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 we, and we had a we had we had a high standard of, of, of play um in, a, in the offensive line room and and, and it, we had a long legacy of guys who, who were doing it at a high level you know what i mean and you wanted to be uh, a part of that you know so so i mean you know th that drive alone of uh, trying to wanting wanting to be having the pride of being a wisconsin offensive lineman uh, in, in that day and age and, and what we stood for and how we played the game, I mean, you know, it, it was nothing like it. And, and to get on that field, you know, you had to go through the crucible to get there. So um, it, it, it was worth it at the end. So what's it like? Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this interview. Like, <laughs> what's it like when a young Matt Bernstein shows up onto campus? What's your, what do you, I mean, any of your first remembrance of, like this young, pretty stupid kid who just shows up, doesn't go to soar, gets MF'd by every coach that's around. What, I mean, what? I mean, I mean, like Bernie, like like your your the energy that you had, dude. It was like it was kind of like unmatched. You know what I mean? It was like it was like you know you were a bigger guy, and it was like we felt bad for you because you had to do the skill stuff and running and stuff. And I'm like, damn man, this dude's damn near my size. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, but like I mean, like you know what you brought to the locker room, the camaraderie and stuff. You know, and, and the bridging the different groups together. You know what I mean? And, and this and uh and, and bringing and bringing you know and bringing you to the to the to the team, man. It was definitely definitely needed man uh and and, and and you and 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 like you you fit our mode dude you know what i mean like it's like you know it was, it was a bunch of times you know what i mean you hitting them linebackers and we're all talking and having a good time out there you know what i mean and it was like it was it was us and you were going that's why we were so happy. Like the O line, especially, took a lot of pride in that Penn State game, man, to try to get you a buck. You know what I mean? Because it was like, man, we had to do it. You know what I mean? It was like we were here. It was like Bernie finally getting the rocks because you know, like if the patent goes and stuff like that. When you get your little tailback runs and everything, you know what I mean? We'll be trying to get you some yards and stuff. But you know, we had that opportunity, man. We had to take advantage of it. <laughs> so, so, so you mentioned. So I have a lot of fond memories about that day. Obviously, but yeah. One of my favorite is you came up to me and you go. Follow me everywhere I go, and you you're basically like you know don't f this up. Follow me. Yeah, yeah and, I mean you know like Bernie, like it's like I, I played a lot, and you were a younger dude, <laughs> and, and you know like sometimes you know you see a guy's face in the huddle and stuff, and you're like looking like oh crap, you had to wild out. I'm like hey, trying to be a calm voice, like hey dude, don't worry, like it's the same place. Just follow me. I'm gonna get you some yards. Like, don't worry. I promise I won't let you down. You know what I mean? Trying to have you that common voice. Like, come on, man. It's time to ride, man. Let's go. <laughs> and what happens on play one? Twenty-seven counter. Yeah. Cut back. Clink right in front of me, dude. This. Um, I think he's still spinning. That cornerback yeah. got. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I got him. Lost off the field. Yeah, off the field. 
the sideline went crazy. I mean, like that, like that was like when they were like when when I went to the, my short cup of coffee in the league. They were like, "What was one of your favorite plays?" That was it, right there. You know what I mean? Like you catch a little corner on the sideline, flip him off the field into the sidelines, everybody going crazy. And then you cut up the field, make some more. You know, like that, that. That's just where it's at, man. That's some good old school Big Ten football. <laughs> it is some good old school you know, Big Ten football. Hat on the hat, cover it up, and let's go. So one of my, but one play I didn't follow you. Huge mistake, by the way. I I got killed. Like it would have been a first down. It would have been forever. And you're like Bernie. I, you're like, dude. I told you. Yeah. Told me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like 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 one thing about being like a, a, a coach Huber player, but you knew where where you guys were supposed to be because I was one of his biggest pet peeves. If you guys didn't hit your landmark, so on every play we knew where exactly where you were supposed to go. We were like, all right, man, hey, if you don't hit this thing, he was like, don't be afraid to let him know. So you know, we were definitely let you know if you didn't go the right way. <laughs> it, it, and a lot of guys did, uh, especially Donovan. So you so you mentioned like the old line. Thinking back, like, dude, that was a solid O line, yeah, for a bunch yeah. of years. I mean, you had Joe Thomas, Benning, Donovan, you, and then a rotating right tackle, yeah. Yeah. Jowers. I think it was Morgan Davis, then yeah. maybe Mike Lorenz. Yeah, and then we had Mike Lorenz in there too. But but those your first off the interior, you guys started four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe for, started four years, my... but he, yeah. yeah. What was so, it like so... to just? I mean be a part of that group. I mean, that was a physical group. Dan Benning was no joke. Donovan no. tried to kill you every play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, it was, um, it was fun, man. I mean, like, like to know exactly that, you know, we, you were playing on a high level and that everybody was, you know, we kind of like pushed each other, you know, it was definitely a competition within the room. Um, like we took pride you know, having our, our stats as far as running yards and all the running back stuff, you know, like, like we cared a lot about that in our room. You know, we were, we were trying to get the backs hundred yard games. We were trying to, you know, keep the quarterback up right when they weren't scrambling around doing whatever, you know, but I mean, um, we, we, we took pride in, in the, in the game of the, of the, of what happened up front and up front. So it was very important to us, but I mean, um, I mean, I feel like, you know, the, the more competition we had, like the better it made us, you know what I mean? You got a guy like Joe Thomas out there who was, who was special since he came in, you know, 250, like you knew he was something special and, and just like some of those epic battles that they would, we would have at that pass rush. I mean, it, it was nothing like it, you know, um, um, we, we had, we had a real good group. You mentioned uh, like trying to get the backs 100 yards. Did you know, like, question from both of you, did you know how many yards like AD had at any given point? Like, okay, guy, he's at 94. We got to make sure we get him more six. Like, how often do you actually know those numbers while you're on the sideline or in the huddle? Somehow that information will be disseminated to the players. Like, <laughs> I don't know, but we knew, <laughs> you know, like yeah. something happened. I mean, or in, either they're looking at the Jumbotron or something or somebody say something. But I mean, like, we talked about it. I mean, it wasn't. It, it was something like, you know, like we talked about, like we talked about four minute offense. You know what I mean? Like we get out there, but like, hey, like, hey, fellas, we're trying to stay, we're trying to stay out here. We're trying to stay on the field. You know what I mean? Like, like we were very vocal. I mean, as far as we were as an offensive unit, we communicated a lot. And, and that was like on and off the field. You know what I mean? I feel like that was one of the things that made us so good is because we did all talk and we weren't um, afraid to say something to somebody and get under somebody's skin if they weren't doing what they were supposed to do or if we felt like they weren't playing up to the best of their ability. You know what I mean? I feel like we held ourselves accountable more than the coaches could. You know, the coaches just yell, you know, but, but out there on that field, you know, if the coaches can't get to you, they can't blow any whistles for you, but you have to answer to the guy sitting next to you, you know, and those, that 11 guys in the huddle, it meant a lot to us, you know what I mean? Those groups that went out there, those different pair groupings, you know, whatever play we did, we took a lot of pride in that. So, I mean, like we definitely knew what was going on as far as that goes. I just always – you definitely knew at some point during the game where we were offensively. I just hate it if my guy was touched AD with a pinky finger. Like it, yeah, it, it maybe yeah. it, it just annoyed me to death because AD was one of my favorite people in the world. He still is, obviously. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I never wanted a dude to touch him. No, 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 not at all. I wanted I mean, him to have a thousand yards a game. 
Yeah, yeah, like we definitely took pride in like and having them untouched to the safety. <laughs> you know, I mean, like yeah. you know, you hear commentators talking about it. Oh yeah, you know, like the the running backs, like we made made sure that that front seven wasn't going to touch them. You know what I mean? And and if like if the O lineman and Bernie was getting after somebody, you know, like O lineman, we we going to follow suit. You know, and the same thing as us. If we having trouble with somebody, you know, Bernie come through, bump the dude, say, hey man, you know, catch him on the chip that next time. You know, and it's it's different when you got to do a two sixty chip and you hit hitting the soft pieces. <laughs> On the way out to that flat route, you know. <laughs> I love chipping the soft pieces too. Oh, dude, it, it was uh, it was funny, man. You and so many, they were so mad, and they were like, "Ref, man!" And I'm like, "Dude, this is a free play, man. I wasn't touching you. My hands are off of you. I promise." <laughs> uh, man, I, you know, like, I absolutely loved being a teammate with you. Like, I really did. We had so much fun on the field, in the weight room, in the locker room in the bars oh, yeah. like you you are you i just really like i told matt Burgess, i'm like you're one of my favorite people to be like you just are a, such a good dude and i don't know it just makes me so happy that we like chose wisconsin to be friends yeah yeah definitely man i mean like we down with the man if it wasn't for the dub man but i mean we all got brought together for a reason dude you know and, and we're definitely all family we're definitely all a big family from all different parts of the of the continent you know we even had a couple guys from from other places and stuff but you know uh, we definitely uh what we had here was special you know and uh i i just hope other kids get to get to feel that same experience of college you know what i mean because to have like a real life college experience is something that you really can't really can't quantify on, on what it does for you you know as far as connections later on in life and just you know just live and life lessons, you know, get to learn to deal with people, be intolerant, you know what I mean, get to deal with people from other places, you know what I mean? I feel like that's huge, and people lose sight of that today, you know? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like, back then in that little bubble, you know, I feel like I feel like I sound like an old man, you know, talking about, you know, back <laughs> in the day, we had a good time. We were from all over the place, but it was true, you know what I mean? And, and one thing that did bring us together was that football, so, you know, something for that. So, quick, I have two stories. One, I believe this is to be true because other people have told it to me and it, and I remember it. So you tell me if this happened or didn't happen. It's not bad, Clint. You actually were, you were the savior in this. Um, we we're at the college club. This is later in the night. Some dudes were getting in my face. And all of a sudden, Clint <laughs> comes over and grabs, grabs the person's face and shakes it a little bit and goes, get out of his face. <laughs> just like lightly. That it. Get out, didn't yeah. shake him hard. Just like this. Get out of his face. And this dude was so mad and then turned the clink and then literally was like, all right, I'll, I gotta go. He's like, I, I, I don't want to mess with this guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how people would take, you know, getting a paw put on their face and getting shook like a little puppy, you know, but um, I don't know. I was under the influence and it seemed like the best thing. <laughs> I and I think it might've went to a song or something was going on. We might've been dancing, having a good time. and. Dude was getting all in your face, and I was just like, "We're not, we're not even doing this. You just yeah. go ahead, get out of here." <laughs> you know, we're having a good time. We're not gonna mess with my boy Bernie because he's gonna have some problems. After that, <laughs> if I start clinking the bar anywhere, I'm like, "Oh, I can do whatever I want here. I'm good." Clink's <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, Clink. So my second story is: is you were were you were you trying out for Tampa, or you were you were at camp with Tampa? Yeah, and then yeah, I yeah, came I, in for a one day tryout. Yeah, and I just hung out with you in your room for like two hours, three hours. <laughs> yeah, it was, was awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, man, it, it was good to see you, dude. It was like because uh, those days in Tampa was rough, man. Just uh, at the international airport in them hotels, extended stays or whatnot, trying trying to make the team and everything, but. Um, it was uh, it was good to see you, man. It was good to see you. I, I wish wish they would have kept on to you, man. We would have had a good time. Yeah, I think I think uh, quickly my football stamina in my brain and my body was just giving it out. Was, like it, it was hot down there, man. You know, it, it was hot. But I think <laughs> it was like more, dude. It was so hot that day. It was like ninety five degrees. Yeah, uh, I drank like thirty Gatorades and weighed in yeah. like ten pounds heavy. And like my, my agent called. He's like, Bernie, are you an idiot? And I'm like, what happened? He's like, how, how did you weigh two seventy? I'm like, I drank 45 Gatorades down here. It's 95 yeah. degrees. It I'm, also fat. I'm also fat. I'm also fat, dude. I'm like, I don't know what you want me to say? Hey, you know, but like, like I felt the same way, man. Like, like later on in my career, I was uh, doing a tryout and I ran a 40 and I was like, you know what? This just ain't for me anymore, man. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just okay. You know, <laughs> almost passed out. We were out in Orlando. 
So I can do something else with my life. <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Yes, I uh, right. I was on the, the playing arena football, and I was like, you know what? This is not. I can't be the 40 year old dude here. You know, the yeah. only, there's like the, there are a lot of them, and they all make not a lot of money to play arena football, where you literally are glad like these guys are killing yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no. you know what? <laughs> No, I'm like bleeding from my forehead. I'm like, what am I doing? This is practice. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> I'm like, I got. It's time to. It's time to put the cleats up, uh, yes, and and just be definitely. happy with what I was able to do in For my sure. life. Neither here nor there. Quick, what, what? What? Who was? Who were some of the toughest dudes to play against? Um, I feel like the toughest dudes to play against were like the the teams who did similar stuff like us. You know, um. I mean, I don't know, man. I really didn't respect too many people, this is to be honest. Um, I mean, like, maybe, like, a couple guys from Iowa were pretty good. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like the, we had the most competition in practice. I mean, um, from, like, Wendell, the days of Wendell Bryant to, you know, Antosh Hawthorne, Jason Jefferson, and those guys, I felt like, you know, um, like, that was, like, the real-time stuff. But, I mean, like, the other teams – uh, I don't know, man. I really can't tell you. I mean, I, I, know, I know I know. when I was a younger player and at playing at Penn State, um, I know Jimmy Kennedy had his way with me when I was a young player, when I was a young man out there in the Big Ten. But um, other than that, man, um, I can't really give you anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was fun. Did we go there in 02 or 03 when we beat them there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah we, beat, yeah, we beat them and we didn't punt. You know, and I remember the big thing was like when they would uh, do something to have that that uh, that tiger growl or something like that, and it was quiet all day. <laughs> it was quiet all day. Oh man, I hate that, that was noise. fun. I hate that noise so much. Yeah. Uh, but they were so loud at the beginning of the game. I jumped off sides. Something you really never want to do. Uh, Huber and Palermo like came together. Like uh, it's like the Transformers <laughs> came together. Man, and... those those two together. If they if if you were in their crosshairs, man, just hold on, man. Because there's really nothing you can do. There was a number of times. That was one of them. In we played Akron. I fumbled the opening kickoff. That was a wrap for me. I, that was almost every coach. I don't. I think I figured it out real quick to be like, just don't care about this. Like these. Yeah. Like, yeah. Only yeah. one who counted was Coach White. That's and it. Coach Alvarez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you had twenty coaches, maybe, maybe a little less, and they all had their own opinion of how much you sucked. Yeah, yeah, in a different colorful ways, right? Like, no, yeah, different, very different colorful ways. Like, let you do something wrong, they all gotta give you their little two cents or something, or try to, I don't know, pick you up, but really just try to tear. Okay, you did you ever? You said you battled a little bit, because I, I remember coming off the field sometimes, and Mason would be like twenty-one personnel. It's like the fourth quarter with like two minutes left, mm. and I'm like, dude, put Greg Rubin. He he deserves to play. Mason's like, nah, mm. you're still in. I'm like, nah, I'm not in right now. You know, I'm not going back. It's 40 to not like let Greg play. He deserves it. He works all hard. Like, why am I going back in for this? And Man, like, I, so like, <laughs> sorry, go for it. I, I, I had a big problem with that as well. I remember the spring games were the worst for me. I remember uh, <laughs> our senior year, Dan Benning and I, we, we were, it was like a little silent protest because we had to play the whole spring game because they didn't have any backups for us. So we just went out and got annihilated the day before. And came in that morning just smelling just so bad. And I never forget they had Dan and I at the station where the, we were throwing little kids on the little on the beam on the little the the uh, the, the velcro sticking thing. So they put the yep. kids in a little bag and we would throw them up on the wall. And Dan he threw a kid over the thing and he missed it. <laughs> And like, luckily, it was like, it was against the wall, so the kid hit on top of the thing and then fell down, and then he was stuck to it, and we got him down. It was just so bad. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but he kid was having a good time. He didn't know, but his dad was like, oh, sorry, but it was. It was... <laughs> Dude, those spring games were so long. It was brutal, man. It was brutal. And then it would be guys out there just really just trying to just show out, and I'm like, man, like. It's the fourth quarter of the spring game. Like, I've played at least 60 snaps, and I'm tired, man. You know, I really don't want to do this today. <laughs> like, uh, I know and I'm sadly, it's a, right, it's a freshman or a sophomore trying to play 
trying to get yeah. in somewhere and you're like Dude, i'm a fifth year senior like i've been i've played in a bunch of games here it was like i'm like this is this is horrible i used to hate that I used to love the pre uh, going out with like, you know, the fans are all there just like signing things, doing random things. That, I thought it was hilarious. It was that, great. That, that was fun. But just yeah. the all out practice after that, I was like, man, I could just do without. They can just let us sign these babies, sign these, these balls and kiss these babies and let us go back to the dorms. <laughs> <laughs> they would have did. It would have been great for PR anyway. They, they, they didn't need to have that game. There's nothing like partying after a spring game or after camp ended. Man, after those those long days of seminary, you breaking out of camp, it was just like it was the mad dash for the first nearest liquor store you can find and buy the the crappiest alcohol, putting your money together, and then just getting annihilated. It was uh, as like a team though. It was great. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you yeah. couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, like Alvy's mantra was, "If you work hard, you play hard." So we took that to heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were working hard, so we were like, "Man, we we got to get out of here." You know the. <laughs> all the, all those days of that, that verbal abuse in uh in training camp, man, you had to get out and do something. Was that I know we're we're get, we're over and we're a little late, but dude, training camp was eighteen days of being at a seminary, yeah. only seeing your the guys. That was I it. mean, the thought of first of all, I I'm a big beer drinker still to this day. I mean, I know Clink, you might not believe it, but it's <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, and and it 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 wasn't any less. When, we, when I was 19, 20, 21, or 22, it was probably Not 10 times all. more. Dude, getting out of camp, the energy, like, I didn't, I wasn't sore. Nothing hurt. I felt like a million dollars. And to drink the first Natty Light or whatever the dumpiest beer you could find, that Pashodi and I used to say quantity over quality. <laughs> <laughs> like, but how good was that first beer, though? Tell me it wasn't. Oh my goodness! It was it was it was the best thing ever. I mean, and it was it was always cold. It was just like it was water. It would go down so smooth, and then you'd be like, you had you'd try to get at least thirty more in you before you would try to go out because we didn't have any money to buy drinks at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> no money at all. Even if we went to a bar, because Alvia, we'd sit us down and be like, "All right, guys, no bars, no frat parties, no." You're like, the only thing we can do is host a party. Yeah. Why are yeah. you making us host a party? It's so stupid. Like, you're going to make us have everybody come over to our house and have. Okay, I guess we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, Clint, thank you for uh, for coming onto the show, dude. It, it, it was so fun playing with you. I just remember you, Donovan, like Dan, just chip on your shoulder trying to blow dudes up all day, and then I was like, man, I got to do this too. I got to do it. Man, but, but Bernie, but like it, it was, it was like a one-two punch. Though I mean, because it would be like either way we went. If we had Dan going, coming down, like us clearing the way, Dan coming around, and then you coming hitting them too right after that. I mean, it was like, like the defenses then couldn't do that all game. You know, I mean, like it, it was like uh, I don't know how many times in the in the in our in our season that we played together that we've been out there for seven minutes and we not come off the field eleven minutes that we run in the same two plays over and over and over again. You know what I mean? So it was like. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it was a different time, you know, as as far as what we were doing out here in Wisconsin. But I mean, like we we, we were like, you know, we're so good, you got to stop us. Like you know what we're doing, you know what our calls are. They've been the same for the last ten years, and it came to bite us in a couple games that we didn't get to the Rose Bowl. But I mean, you know, for for the most part, you know, we 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 were just saying we were going to be better than y'all. We were we were going to be tougher. We we're going to and, and have these fundamentals, and we we're going to kick your butt. You know, so that's what it was all about. Great place to end because. I just love that because it's true. <laughs> just come out there. We're gonna. It's gonna be a fist fight for four quarters, and hopefully, most likely, we'll be standing at the end. Yeah, like just know you're gonna be ready. Because I mean, like we were like a scrappy team. You know, it was like we we weren't very explosive on the outside. We didn't really throw the ball a lot. But one thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pound that rock. We're gonna hit you with a play action pass, and we're gonna play some nasty defense. You know what I mean? And just and you had to come here ready to play, or else you're gonna be, go home hurting in the equipment tent trying to figure it out <laughs> <laughs> you you never got praised for hurting anybody but you got praised no. for like destroying somebody no 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 you know you never got praised for hurting anybody but if you can if you knock somebody off their feet or decleat somebody or you know get a pancake or something you know it was a part of it but we had to finish i mean he totally. was 
be a person. He's like, you better finish it. You better finish what you got. you like, we have to finish our job. You know what I mean? So if you throw somebody on the ground, you have to go ahead and finish and make sure you, you got to cancel them out, make sure you're not getting back up. So, you know, some people call that dirty. We just call it just good old smash my football. No, I, <laughs> listen, I, I, I was a hundred percent with you. If you knock somebody down or listen, if you two, two people running face to face and you knock him out. Yeah. I mean, you should get props. Like that's yeah. pretty awesome. It's football. Yeah. Like this happens. Exactly. Um, exactly. Unless it's Alex Lewis knocking me out, then he shouldn't get props. But uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm happy my mom and dad didn't see that. Yeah. It would be bad, man. Dude, some of the stuff that we used to go through, your parents would be like, "Are they really doing that to my baby?" Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> what, like, what about running outside? We run up the ramp. They'd open the door to outside, so you could run outside in the minus twenty degrees to run right back inside to the field house. I thought that was the stupidest thing. Was to stop five yards short, so we don't have to run through. It's horrible, man. It's horrible. <laughs> it was so cold for one second. Okay, quick. We got to let you go, man. You All got right, important well. things to do, saving lives. I got to wake up when this baby wakes up. Uh, yeah. But dude, I, I got, thank you, man. I got, I got mine to sleep. Thank you, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. I yeah. have you. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. And thank you to everyone for tuning in here to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Network, presented by betonline.ag and our friends over at Oak Ridge Wealth Management. Uh, and until next time, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin, baby. On Wisconsin. <laughs>